Do you enjoy football? Do you enjoy romance? If you answered yes to either of these questions, football romance might be for you. I've chosen five four-star football romance novels that we're gonna be trying out in this video. Only one will be victorious. Hi, my name's Bee. Welcome to my channel, Mama Needs to Read Romance. Because nobody in one of the books I'm about to read would use this kind of whistle. <laughs> so much fun with my try a chapter challenge for pirate romance in July and then for western romance in August I thought we got to make the fun keep going in September and what better time to do a football romance than September that's right all the football is getting started I believe and Christy of Christy reads a lot first got me into football because she recommended one of the books which I love but one football romance wasn't enough for me I wanted more hence this video's try a chapter challenge all about football romance I have found five books. They're all four stars and above. Some are on Kindle Unlimited, some I got through the library, and one is from Audible, which I used a credit for. I cannot wait to share these with you. What we're going to do is we're going to find out a little bit about each book, then I'm going to read the first chapter from each, and after that I'm going to pick my favorite and then do a review at the end. I hope this gives you some ideas for some football romance that you might like to try. Let's start talking about the five books. Okay, the first book is called I Promise You by Ilsa Madden Mills. It is book four in the Wayland University series. I chose book four out of all four because this one got a 4.18 on Goodreads, which was the highest of the four. They all look very good though, and they're all on Kindle Unlimited, which is kind of cool. So I have to read this. There's a legend at Wayland University. The first girl you kiss freshman year at the bonfire party is the one you'll never forget. She'll crawl under your skin. She'll spark a passion so fierce you'll burn the world down to possess her. You might even put a ring on it. But timing is everything. That kiss can go horribly wrong. She might run in the opposite direction and boy did Serena run. Dylan is Wayland's hotshot quarterback with something to prove. All he wants is to graduate and make it to the NFL. What he doesn't need is to finally meet the mystery girl he kissed at the bonfire in freshman year. Isn't it enough that she's haunted his dreams for more than three years? Fate laughs in his face when he runs into the plucky girl at the Piggly Wiggly. Surrounded by his entourage, he's got all the Oreos in his cart. She gets revenge by buying every six pack of his favorite beer. Obviously, that legend's a curse. She's not his type and hates him. Worst of all, how can he not remember her when she left a Serena-shaped hole in his heart all those years ago? Why can't he stop trying to win her? Will this quarterback score the girl or make the biggest fumble of his life? This sounds really fun. I'm getting college football vibes. This might take me back in time a little bit, which I'm excited about. And it, there's like kind of a magical element, I think maybe because of this legend. So I'm excited to try this. My second offering is by Soraya Wilson. I fell in love with her last month when I read The Seat Filler, and I'm really excited about this. I will tell you though, this is a two book series called The End of the Line. And the first one actually sounds a little bit better to me, but it's only a 3.9 rating. And I promised only four stars and above. So I'm picking the second book in The End of the Line series, Just a Boyfriend. This is number two. It got a 4.0 on Goodreads. As I'm reading the summary though, I'm a little nervous about it. But I know Soraya Wilson is more like wholesome, so it can't be too weird, hopefully. <laughs> Let me show you what I mean. Ian Bash Sebastian and Ember Carlson were high school sweethearts until their single parents got married. Now, with one thorny twist of fate, a secret young crush went from on fire to off limits. What could a new stepbrother do but bail? Now, after almost four years, Bash has returned to Seattle and he's back in Ember's orbit at the end of the line. EOL, end of the line, is the go-to college for second chance scholarships. But what about love? Sure, the old hurts are there. So is the attraction. And it's more magnetic than ever. Still, they're adults now, level-headed and just fine with the friend thing, if only to make family dinners less awkward. <laughs> yeah. But when they agree to start dating other people, moving on threatens to bring them closer together than ever. Is it time to admit their past to their parents? Even trickier, their hope for the future? Because Ember and Bash deserve a love story of their own. With all their defenses down, can they make it a happy ever after? Can they? Can they? 
we're gonna have to read and find out. Oh, and both of the end of the line books are on Kindle Unlimited. All right, this next one I got through my library. It's an ebook and it's called Natural Born Charmer. It is by Susan Elizabeth Phillips and it got a 4.15 on Goodreads. This one sounds really funny. <laughs> Chicago Stars quarterback Dean Robillard is the luckiest man in the world, a bona fide sports superstar and the pride of the NFL with a profitable side career as a buff billboard model for end zone underwear. But life in Glory Lane has started to pale and Dean has set off on a cross country trip to figure out what's gone wrong. When he hits a lonely stretch of Colorado highway, he spies something that will shake up his gilded life in ways he can't imagine. A young woman dressed in a beaver suit. <laughs> Blue Bailey's on a mission to murder her ex, <laughs> or at least inflict serious damage. As for the beaver suit she's wearing, is it her fault that life keeps throwing her curveballs? Witness the expensive black sports car pulling up next to her on the highway and the Greek god stepping out of it. Blue's career as a portrait painter is the perfect job for someone who refuses to stay in one place for very long. She needs a ride, and America's most famous football player has an imposing set of wheels. Now all she has to do is keep him entertained, off guard, and fully clothed before he figures out exactly how desperate she is. But Dean isn't the brainless jock she imagines, and Blue, despite her petite stature, is just about the toughest woman Dean has ever met. They're soon heading for this summer home where their already complicated lives and inconvenient attraction to each other will become entangled with a charismatic but aging rock star, a beautiful 52 year old woman trying to make peace with her rock and roll past, an 11 year old who desperately needs a family and a bitter old woman who hates them all. As the summer progresses, the wandering portrait artist and the charming football star play a high stakes game, fighting themselves and each other for a chance to have it all. This book sounds bananas. I don't know how else to describe it. <laughs> and I'm very intrigued. As I mentioned earlier, I've read one football romance in my entire life, and that was The Game Plan by Kristen Callahan. And it was steamy, it was fun, it was deep. Well, it wasn't that deep, but it was good. And that was book three in the series Game On. Book four has a 4.16 on Goodreads. So I thought I needed to give this series another shot. I'm going almost backwards. I'm, I read book three. Now I'm going to look at book four. Book one I was going to try, but it's not quite a 4.0. And like I said, I got to stick to my guns. I got to do my only 4.0 and above. So I can't do that one. The second one looks good, but not as good. But this one looks like it could be the best one. So here is The Hot Shot by Kristen Callahan, which I am getting for one credit on Audible. First we were friends, then we were roommates. Now I want more. What can I say about Chess Cooper? The woman is capable of bringing me to my knees. I know this about five minutes after getting not clothed for her. No one is more surprised than me. The prickly photographer my team hired to shoot our annual charity calendar isn't my usual type. She's defense to my offense, a challenge at every turn. But when I'm with her, all the regrets and darkness goes away. She makes life fun. I want to know Chess, be close to her, which is a bad idea. Chess is looking for a relationship and I've never given a woman more than one night. But when fate leaves Chess without a home, I step up and offer her mine. We're roommates now, friends without benefits. But it's getting harder to keep our hands off each other and the longer we live together, the more I realize she's becoming my everything. Trick is, now that I've made her believe that I'm a bad bet, how do I convince her to give this player a true shot at forever? It just looks so good. Force proximity enemies to lovers maybe i mean it looks like it's gonna be really good and it's the last book in the series i'm excited all right for my last offering it's actually the highest rated at 4.28 it is by lexi ryan i got this in ebook form through my local library it's book six of the boys of jackson harbor it is called if it's only love. It's a standalone romance, but it's also good as a series, so I'm cool. I don't regret much. Not my decision to enter the NFL draft before finishing college. Not fighting custody of my daughter, even if biologically speaking, it turns out she's not mine. 
and certainly not seducing my buddy's little sister 10 years ago. But when it comes to Shaylee Jackson, my no regrets attitude stops there. I screwed up royally where she's concerned. Then I made another mistake when I let her shut me out of her life. Now, after more than a decade living in different time zones, I'm coming home to Jackson Harbor. My first priority is getting my daughter away from the media circus in LA, but the moment I see Shay, I know I'll stop at nothing to win her back. So what if she won't speak to me? So what if she's changed? So what if she's followed, fallen for some douchebag professor? I've never gotten over her and I know she feels the same about me. I've let her go twice. I won't make that mistake again. A lot of more like kind of heavier stuff going on in this one. I'm excited to give it a whirl though. So those were the five books and I think we should go ahead and get started reading the first chapter of each and then I'm gonna pick which one I like the best. Okay, so I just finished the prologue, Dylan. This book is really interesting. So we're at a bonfire. It's September, crisp autumn air. I cannot wait for that. It's still super hot over here. And it's after a big game. It went really well. Dylan is the quarterback of the football team. He's a freshman. He's basically swatting the babes away. I mean, they really want him because apparently he did very well, but he cannot keep his eyes off this gorgeous girl. He says that she's not his type. She's got military boots, a red mini skirt. She's got long auburn hair that she's holding up and she has a dandelion tattoo on the back of her neck. <laughs> she's got a, like a halter top on and suspenders that connect to the skirt. It's giving me nineties vibes, <laughs> but anyway, he cannot keep his eyes off her. She just keeps dancing in front of the bonfire and guys coming up to her like over and over and she keeps being like, no, thank you. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, she's waiting for me. So his friends are though, they're warning him against any girl basically because apparently the land that they were on used to be Wiccan land as in witches. And apparently they're buried in the woods. And so he's like, yeah, I don't know if I believe that. But football players are notoriously superstitious, which he's acknowledging. But apparently anybody who kisses at the bonfire, who it's their first bonfire or their freshman, the girl will haunt them for the rest of their days and it doesn't ever end well. And both of his good friends on the football team each have a story about kissing a girl at the bonfire in their previous year. And either they ended up with somebody else or they just disappeared. And he's like, okay, okay. But eventually after the night wears on, he just can't hold back anymore. So he goes right up to her and he kisses her and it's hot. And then she pushes him away and she's like, no. And he, this is the part I didn't like. He goes, you liked it, ugh, gross. But anyway, beyond that, she disappears and he, although he's very tall and he has a height advantage, he can't really see her. So, I didn't read chapter one because I'm tired of always reading like two chapters in to some of the books and then getting an advantage over the others. So I'm only reading the first chapter, which was the prologue, but chapter one starts three years later and the title of it is Serena. And I'm guessing Serena is the name of the girl that he kissed at the bonfire. So this is a really good one. I might have to go to this one. because I just finished reading the first chapter of Just a Boyfriend. Oh my God, it's so good. This is the second book in a row where I'm like, I could choose this one too. So it's actually really funny. We have Ember, she's home from college and she just finds out through her sister and her stepsister who are the same age that her ex and his, also her stepbrother is coming home for dinner. She didn't know he was gonna be coming home. Apparently they had a relationship that was the best thing ever up until a few months before their parents got married. And right after they all moved in together, he basically flees to go to Pennsylvania and live with his grandparents. She starts to freak out because she's not even remotely over him, even though it's been three years. Here we go with the three years thing again, just like the last book, it's been three years. And she's trying to make herself presentable. He comes in the house, she's coming downstairs, she sees him. She comments on how his football build is straining his white t-shirt. Like, oh no, not that. Uh, but yeah, she's talking about how gorgeous he is with his 
blonde hair and his green eyes and he's even bigger than he was before. She hasn't seen him in a while. And she basically says hi and then she runs upstairs because she doesn't know what else to do. She's freaking out. And then he follows her. He goes up to her room and he knocks on the door and He's like, do you remember the last time we were in here together? And apparently it was pretty epic, whatever happened when they were last in the room together. So he goes, do you have a sec? And she goes, I have lots of sex. And she goes, I mean, seconds, in increments of time. There are quite a few times in the first chapter where I was really chuckling. It was quite good. So he starts to apologize to her and he wants to explain why he left all those years ago. And just as he's about to talk to her about it, her mother comes in and asks for her to help with dinner. So we don't know anything else, but we do know there is some electrical charge going back and forth between the two of them. As Ember says, it wasn't closure, it was opener. <laughs> which I thought was also humorous. So we're gonna see what happens. But what's so cool is in chapter two, it's told by Bash. So we're going back and forth between the two characters. It's told in first person. So I can't wait to see what Bash is thinking in the next chapter, if I read on, if I choose this book. I know I can't choose all of them. This is getting hard on My finger may have slipped a little bit and I might have read like 71 whole pages. <laughs> this book is so insane. We've got Shay and East. Shay is 17, East Easton is 21. He's just left college to join the NFL a year early and they are having a big party. All the friends, all the brothers. Shay is the youngest sister of a ton of brothers from previous books in the series, I'm assuming. And Easton has definitely got a crush on her. Shay feels like there's no way on the planet he could have interest in her because she is overweight. And initially when I read that, I was like, oh, I'm done with this book already. I can't stand that. But when I accidentally, my finger accidentally slipped and I read a little more, it's the next chapter is told from Easton's perspective. and He thinks she's perfect and I love it. I love it. Um, he is very much into her and he has been for a while. His Shay's brothers, however, have been the ones that have said, don't you dare touch her. And everybody's outside at the party. Some people are getting drunk and he's unhappy that she's not 18 yet. He says he has terrible timing, but she, he offers her a shot of tequila. Again, 17, that's terrible. It's terrible. You lick the salt, you take the shot, and then you suck on a lime. And he licks her wrist multiple times while they're doing this. And she loves that. And apparently so does he. Easton is being pulled far in various directions by various brothers of Shay's to try to get him away from her. At the end of the chapter, it was so irritating because one of Shay's older brothers, Carter, says to Easton, oh, that blonde tri-delt that you liked in school is out there. And he's like, oh yeah. I thought, anyway, I was so sick of it. But again, as my finger accidentally went into the next chapter, because I don't know, it's so interesting. This is very similar to just a boyfriend in that there's something going on. They're on the younger side. They're college age, basically. And there's something about this writing. It's very compelling. It's very much a page turner, except I'm reading it on a laptop. <laughs> I need to download it. I need to put it on my Kindle, but anyway, or read it on my phone. Reading it on my laptop is not gonna work. So I really am finding this book enthralling and compelling. I have, I've had a hard time putting it down. So this might end up being the book I pick, despite the fact that it's a little more vulgar than I'm used to. Um, it's just the writing, I don't know. I, and I don't want to say anything else about the book yet because I only wanted to tell you about chapter one, but there's some, it's good. It's very interesting. So, let's try another one. So I did read one chapter. I stuck to one chapter this time of The Hot Shot. And it just, this honestly was the least compelling first chapter of any of the books that I've read so far. I know Kristen Callahan's good. I know I liked her other stuff. I know this book was, I think the highest rated of the four. So I know it's going to be good. We've got Chess. She is a photographer who is very apathetic towards her job right now. Nothing's doing it for her anymore. Even taking pictures of naked models. She's just like over every 
everything. She meets Finn, who is the quarterback of the football team. He's there with three other guys for the naked photo shoot for the football, the New Orleans team. And he is gorgeous, apparently. He's in tons of ads, he's got beautiful eyes, but he's also extremely arrogant. So she knows that he's aware that he's hot. <laughs> So he's got a very good opinion of himself, apparently, and she is just trying not to be interested. That's pretty much it for the first chapter. Of all four so far, this one is the least enticing. I don't even know where to begin with this book. Uh, okay, so I listened to one chapter. It was a very long first chapter. It's written kind of like my grandpa used to talk, like lousy and wise guy. And the, she assumes that he's gay because he's wearing designer clothes and he's well-built and he's beautiful. And she's like, you're gay. And later on, he uses that to his advantage because as we established in the, the summary, she's wearing a beaver suit when he finds her and he's driving his Aston Martin. He's very, very wealthy. She needs to go to the bathroom. So he takes her to a gas station and he's trying to help her unzip her beaver suit. He told her that he is gay just to make her feel more at ease. And I'm like, this is all kinds of bizarre. But anyway, as he's unzipping her, he's like, it's not like you have anything I'd care to see, which I'm like, this could be problematic. And then um, he's thinking to himself, like the more he's unzipping her, the, the less gay he feels. And I'm just like, oh my, there's so many weird quotes and things that are said. Like she's furious with her boyfriend because she just uprooted her life to come to him after he begged her to come stay with him across country. And then she finds out he's with someone else now. And <clears throat> so she wants to kill him. And it's, it is pretty funny. Like she, he, <laughs> when the hero finds her alongside the road, he goes, can I help you? She goes, do you have a gun? And he goes, not on me. She goes, then no, you can't help me. And later on, he's like, do you, <laughs> he said, if I drive you there, am I an accessory to murder? And she's like, maybe, but it was, it's just very over the top. Like her, when her ex wants to know who he is, he goes, I'm a man of mystery loved by many, adored by most, or something like that. It's just kind of over the top hilarity. It reminds me a lot of Carolyn Brown and One Hot Cowboy Wedding, which I feel like I've experienced enough of that for now. There's not much in the way of romance. I feel like this is gonna be heavily, heavily humorous, which has its place, but I'm looking for more like deep love. Obviously she thought he was gay. So there's like zero chemistry going on except for what he apparently feels as he's unzipping her beaver suit. At one point he goes, hey, go easy on the old beaver. And then at another point, uh, the new girlfriend says she and her and the her heroine's ex are soulmates. And she goes, more like crap mates. And I'm like, oh my. I just don't think I could get through this interesting, interesting writing. <laughs> it's just too zany for my taste, I think. So I'm going to go pick up my first pumpkin spice latte of the year. Very excited. And I'm really excited. So here comes the first sip. Yes. Roll on fall. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm very excited. Oh my gosh. So yummy. While I was at Starbucks, I had a chance to think about which book I'm going to pick for my football romance. You may have some idea already. Let's really quickly recap what we've got here. Let's first knock out the obvious, Natural Born Charmer. For me, Natural Born Charmer is too zany. It reminds me too much of One Hot Cowboy Wedding. It's a little awkward, some of it, and a little clunky in places. So I'm gonna knock that one out. I'm also gonna knock out The Hot Shot by Kristen Callahan. I know at some point I am gonna listen to it. I'm gonna listen to all the books in that series because I so enjoyed the game plan. It's not the most compelling of these five. I promise you by Ilsa Madden Mills. This book is good. I'm really intrigued to see what happens between Serena and I forgot his name already, but it's just not as exciting as the book that I'm gonna be picking. All right, we're down to two. The Boyfriend Zone by Soraya Wilson and If It's Only Love by Lexi Ryan. As I said, both of these books started out in a very similar way. They're both in like college age. There's been a long time love. 
there's this promise of maybe something more, but they have family members that obviously would not go for that for very different reasons. With the boyfriend zone, obviously they're step siblings, he's taken off. The writing in If It's Only Love has gripped me from the beginning. I am so intrigued and I am excited about the prospect of them being adults too, of the time passing and seeing what happens over time as opposed to mostly like a college type football romance. I think ultimately though, there's just something about the story between Shay and East that's just really grabbing me. Even as I've been experiencing other chapters in these other football books, I cannot put down if it's only love. The title's not even very good. The cover is kind of meh. So I would never have picked this out myself, but this book, I'm getting deeper and deeper into it. So yes, I've definitely sort of cheated again, sorry, but it's so good. And that's how I really know this is the book for me because I, every opportunity, I'm just reading it again. I'm not trying to figure out how many pages to read each day. I'm just reading it every chance I get. So I am really into this book and I can't wait to tell you more about it. So this is obviously my choice if it's only one. just finished the book five stars this author she's so amazing she does something that I've never seen before which is she jumps through time quite a bit and the more she jumps back and forth in time in their lives the tighter the screws turn in terms of the angst and things that went wrong these two have loved each other since childhood but there have been many circumstantial things that have happened and their choosing to do the right things have kept them apart. And now there's a chance that finally things may fall into place, except maybe there's another huge obstacle in the way, but it's, it's realistic obstacle after obstacle. It's two good people trying to do the right things, trying to make the right choices. Now I understand the title. If it's only love, Yes, they realize that it's love, but their love was never enough to keep them together because of all the circumstances that continue to get in the way. I highly, highly recommend this book. By the way, the first book in the series, I think it's seven or eight books, I can't remember. The first one is on Kindle Unlimited. So you can read the first one on your own if you would like. I, and these are all highly rated. So I highly recommend it. I'm definitely gonna be trying out the first one. Couple things though, trigger warning on this particular book. There is uh, some fat shaming a little bit. There is definitely some uh, discussions around eating and maybe even exercise disorders. There is cancer of more than one character in the story. There's a funeral. There is the passing of a beloved family member. So if any of those things might be upsetting to you, you might wanna steer clear of this book for now. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was steamy. East Austin is a real gentleman. He's a good man. I really liked him a lot. Whenever there was like a steamy moment, he's always checking in with her. Like, is this okay? Is that okay? Like he's, he respects her so much and he loves her so much and she loves him. Her lack of confidence in herself is so insidious. She doesn't even recognize it for what it is. She just feels like whatever she believes about herself to be the truth. Not that she has low self-esteem. She has no idea that's part of her problem. There were some twists and turns that I, one specifically I did not expect it all and then I wasn't sure what was going to happen and I kind of want to tell you what it is because I know some people feel strongly about this particular trope but I don't want to give it away because it might ruin the story for you if you want to read it you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna wait until the end of the video if you want to go all the way to the end I'll tell you what the trope is because people really seem to feel strongly about this and some people won't even read a book if it has this in here. so anyway am i being vague enough all right i'm gonna stop this was such a fun video i really enjoyed the football romance i'm definitely going to be reading more football romance in the future i mean some of the other books even in this video i'm definitely going to be reading at some point i really enjoyed them some authors that i love kristen callahan soraya wilson now lexi ryan I'm, I'm excited this was a lot of fun and thank you so much for joining me i hope you're enjoying what it is that you're reading, no matter what subgenre of romance it is. Until next time, thanks so much, take care, and bye. Okay. All right. Everybody else is gone now. I'm going to tell you. Are you ready?
click off if you don't want to know. There's a surprise baby. <gasps> a big surprise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now I am going to let you go. Bye again.